Well, there you've seen our sled line up for the year and the 700 here behind us. But now we're going to do something a little special. Remember when we were at the Toronto Snowmobile and ATV show, I stopped and I talked to the guys at the Evans Waterless Coolant Table. We did something kind of neat. We brought them here to our shop today so we can do a conversion on one of our snowmobiles. Now this is the coolant right here. Take a look at that. So our man from Evans Waterless Coolant is here to help us out with this. He's just going to oversee the operation because you know, there's not, it's not that technical, but one thing you have to do is you've got to make sure all the water is out of the system. Now in order to do that, we've got a little shop vac, got a couple hoses, and we're going to work on getting the water out of that 700 dew that we built. Let's go do it. Now we had this sled at the dyno shop. We had it at Jaws. The whole thing is full of water right now. We don't have coolant in it because the system that he uses when he hooks it up to the dyno, it just runs on water. It's nice and clean. It's very effective at cooling. So we only have to get water out of here. I could just bust the line out of the bottom, open it up, do it that way, or we can go in with a cool little vacuum tool that I just made up, just like everybody else has in their home. All I'm doing is I'm using this piece of fuel line I have, this Tigon fuel line that I use for most of my sleds. I'm going to use this. We're going to insert it in several different places on the sled. We're going to try to suck the water out. Well, most if not all of you have access to a shop vac. This little fitting came on this shop vac, so I'm just going to basically slip my hand around there like that. I've already done a test on it. I've sucked some water out of a bottle. No air gets in around there. I'm just going to start sticking it in various orifices of the snowmobile. That's working well. You're going to have to get all the water out of this or all your coolant out of it. You're going to have to Mickey Mouse around a lot with your sled. You're going to have to lift it up a bunch of times, put it down. Right now, I want to try to get as much water out of this rear cooler as I can. So I'm going to lift up the back. Try to get it up there. Get as much water forward as I can. Now we're going to try to get some of this coolant and water out of that rear cooler. You can see that's a U cooler that I got from Van Amberg Enterprises. Now you might think that thing holds a lot of fluid, but actually it doesn't. They're very efficient. And I'll just show you here, this is a cross section of that cooler. Not very much coolant goes through this thing at all. You can see the heat sink fins right here. It's only about, well oh geez, not even a quarter of an inch thick. So there's not going to be very much fluid in there, but we got to get as much out as we can. You're definitely going to get a little dirty doing this. You're going to get some coolant on your floor. There's no doubt about it. That's just the way it is. Make sure you're wearing gloves because, you know, it's not a good stuff. It is toxic. I know. Just blow some air through there and see if we can get any excess out. I don't see there's still some in there because this is a U shape. So even though I sucked it out here, I still got to suck it out here. Now, just to make sure I'm not blowing water back into the system, I'm going to do this. Now, if you were just draining your system and you had a week, you know, where you weren't going to take, go out on your sled and take it for a run, you could probably pop all these hoses off and just let it sit. And a lot of this would, would, would just evaporate? Yeah. Would it come out of the, there? Except for the, uh, basically the ethylene glycol would not evaporate. Would the water evaporate out of it? Some water will evaporate out of it. If you find yourself that you've got, you think you still have some water in there, one of the things you can do is take the coolant out and sit and put it on a, on a hot plate and warm the water out of it. In other words, if you had a situation where you had to add some water because of a problem that you had on the trail, right. it doesn't mean to say that the Evans is finished. What it means is that you have to take it out of the system okay. and then warm the water out of there for two or three days. Ah, okay? I see, that's interesting, okay. Now you saw that I ran my little fuel line down in through here and I sucked out as much water and the coolant as I could. Our man from Evans has told me to run less than 3% of your old ethylene glycol 50-50 mix or water. So there you go. Got that out and I'll suck out what I can from there. You know, that's just a good idea when you're taking any coolant out of your sled. That little thing works pretty slick. Now don't forget your carbs are heated on this sled, most sleds are now. So you're going to want to suck out whatever you can out of that little nipple there. Maybe that'll help get us some water out. We've got to try to suck it out here as well. Got to get that water and coolant out. Oh, hose to the water pump. 
shouldn't be much in there at all. Just a little bit. Well, that was a little easier than I thought. I just grabbed this other length of fuel line that we had and just jammed it through the hoses. You know, might save you a lot of time pulling things apart to do something like that. Although it did remind me of my colonoscopy a little bit. Next. You know, we came up with a good point. It's not too often that uh, somebody comes up with a better point than me. But this clear line, you can see the fluid moving through it, so it's pretty handy. I'm just going to try sucking out a little bit more here. So I'm convinced I've done enough sucking and blowing on all my hoses and that we've got as much water and coolant out of the system as possible. Now I'm just going to bolt everything back up and we're going to install the new fluid. Now this coolant came clear when we first got it here. Well, all we did was we added a couple drops of food coloring. I talked to their engineers and they said no problem at all. And their power sports products coming out soon will be colored just to help us see the product when it's, you know, if you overheat, maybe a line comes undone, you can see it on the trail. A clear product wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. I'm going to fill up the cooler first, just because we have easy access to it. There you go. Okay. Now you might be asking why I'm doing this, why we're using this coolant, what the advantages are. I overheat my sleds. I've done it before. Any modder probably has done it. Even trail riders do it, you know, when the trail gets really hard, maybe you've run into a rainstorm, trail's all icy, your sled overheats. The light comes on, maybe you boil over, you see the fluid on the trail. And that's why I'm running this stuff now. I'm going to give it a try. We've heard some really good reviews about it. They run it in big tractor trailers, no problem. The ethylene glycol itself is very corrosive. Everything that's in it just wants to tear apart at the inside of your sled. To make it less corrosive, they got to add water to it, and it also helps with the cooling of it. But water itself is corrosive, and that adds to more issues. Water boils when it's in a pressurized system at about you know, 212, 220 degrees. That's when you really run into your problem. That's when you see the water boiling out through your cap, and that's what we don't want. Coolant's ability to pull heat away from the cylinder walls has been lost because it's all bubbling in there. You don't want that. That's because of the water. It's producing steam. It's so hot. Now this stuff, it boils at, I think, 375 degrees. So technically, well, and realistically, it's going to happen. When this sled is up around 220, 260 degrees, I can pop the radiator cap off this. There's no pressure in the system because there's no steam. It doesn't boil. That's pretty cool. This is a one-time coolant. You don't ever need to change this. Once it's in your sled, Keep using it. You don't need to replace it every year, every two years. Same with their products for cars or trucks. It's a one-time coolant. When you scrap your sled or pull it apart, you keep this stuff, put it in your next sled. It doesn't have all those nasty additives that they have to put into ethylene glycol in your 50-50 mix to keep your system from corroding and making a real mess of things in there. One other thing they found it's non-toxic, doesn't kill animals. You know, antifreeze, dogs love to come up and lick that stuff, cats, you know, some of you might not like cats, but this stuff, non-toxic. It does have a warning label on it that it's harmful if swallowed, blah, 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 but what they found, it's non-toxic to animals. Well, we have to thank Chris for coming by. It's nice to see a local Canadian distributor here that we can talk to and come by and help us with this install. We're going to go out and do some testing, have some fun on the trails this winter with this stuff. So uh, I got to thank you very much for coming by and very nice to meet you. Well, thank you. And I'll be happy to look, for, I look forward to working with you. Yeah. Anything else you need, just let me know. All right. The way I'm looking at this is, you know, that coolant, it's good for the life of the machine and longer. So when I need to pull this stuff out, I can put it in another sled if I want. 
Um, it's not corroding all the inside of my workings of the engine and the coolers. And not only that, but it's insurance against an overheat, and that's my main concern. You know, when I overheat a sled, I don't want to melt down a piston or I don't want to score the, the inside of the cylinder walls. I don't want those problems. I want the protection. And something that boils at 375 degrees, that's a lot better than your water-based coolant, right? So thanks for coming and watching. I love it when you guys show up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the big old thumbs up button. Come see me again at Power Mods.